hands to get it right. What did I say? I believe that it is from here that you decide how your marriage will be. You are the one who determines the outcome of your marriage. So you still have a chance to do it right. Because the truth is that when people get married, most times the only thing we can tell them when they bring marriage problem is prayer. We'll say be praying. But now you can still decide the outcome of your marriage. So yesterday, Pastor K took time to explain to you the things that you should do and the things that you should know. So I'm just going to add my voice because it's important. The foundation of everything is important. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If you're building material, the very foundation of anything is bad, then anything you put on it is a waste of time. So as a single person, you are the one that determines how your marriage will go. So from now that you are single, you can choose right. And let me tell you, if you do anything, make sure you never make this one mistake. Never marry an unbeliever if you are a believer. I'm not even going to play games with you. It is not optional. I hear a lot of young girls and ladies, I'm here for you tonight. Because I believe that you are the one that decides and determines the outcome of most marriages. Because you are the one who chooses. Nobody marries at gunpoint. Nobody forces you to marry. But half the time, young girls are picking for the wrong reasons. Somebody is an unbeliever. And you, as a Christian, go and join yourself. Yesterday, Pastor K read the scripture. What concord does light have with darkness? This thing does not become real to you until you encounter some terrible situations. Let me tell you, I know that a lot of people say that, uh, you say we should not marry an unbeliever, but Christians too, they are not good. Let me tell you, there's a difference between having an evil nature and doing evil. One is behavior, the other one is nature. Nature cannot be changed until Christ enters a person. Yesterday night, when we go back to the hotel, I was telling my husband, I said, you should thank the Holy Spirit. God was saying something about, ah, you're amazing. I said, let me tell you, it's the Holy Spirit you're married to. Because if it is not the Holy Spirit, my behavior yourself, no good. <laughs> so I'm telling you, there's a difference between someone who has Christ and someone who does not have Christ. When Christ enters a man, something changes. It means the person holding his remote is God. Bible says that the heart of the king is in God's hand. Which God? If the man is an unbeliever, who is holding his remote? So I see young girls open their eyes and go to cemetery and pick dead body. If you will not marry a dead body in real life, why are you doing it spiritually? Someone who is not born again is spiritually dead. So you are joining yourself to dead body. I don't care how rich he is. Dead body now, dead body. So he can have money. There are many people in the cemetery today that have money. Why don't you go there and marry them? He's a dead body. You can't be alive and join yourself to a corpse. I see a lot of people. And then you want him to change. One of my daughters came to me recently. He's just been married for two months. And I've been sharing this story everywhere I go. Because when they're telling people, they'll be saying, Pastor, you don't understand. I love him. Anytime he talks, I can't breathe. It's not love. It's asthma. So you better know the difference. <laughs> Pastor, you don't understand. I feel butterflies in my tummy. Butterflies last span is two weeks. It means it will fade. So you cannot make decisions based on that. No matter how amazing he is. Oh, Pastor, you don't understand. He's a nice person. Nice is not a fruit of the spirit. So when you enter into marriage, those things will not count. It is only someone who has the nature of God that can do marriage God's way. So I see a lot, lot of young girls. They tell me, Pastor, this girl, we're telling her marry, to marry a Christian, do the right thing. She was saying, oh, you don't understand. I love him. I'm sent to him. You are sent to him, evangelist. Now you know, go, you know, see missionary field. We are laughing, but I'm serious. This is how girls put themselves in trouble. This girl married an unbeliever and came to my house two months that she's done. I say you are done. Food will never enter fire, they done. How are you done? Two months. She said, ah, that the guy is mean. He likes to keep malice. He's, he's very selfish. He only thinks of himself. If he's not his way. I said, 
is he born again? She said, no. I said, so how do you expect an unbeliever to behave like a believer? You are the one that has the problem, not him. Because he was on his own journey as an unbeliever. You did not leave him for somebody that can keep malice like him. You did not leave him for somebody that is selfish like him. You did not keep him for somebody that is evil like him. You went to meet him. And now you want him to become a believer. I said, no, it doesn't work that way. You can't marry a dog and expect him to roar like a lion. It doesn't work that way. I said, as you have entered this marriage now, maybe you were sent to him. Now you are sent to him. Now your ministry of intercession begins. Because when you marry, you either marry a prayer point or a prayer partner. So once you have married him now, he has become your prayer point. You will pray first of all that he will come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved. Not that he will love you. He will come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved. Are you not even selfish? You are a Christian and you are on your way to heaven. You marry somebody who is not on his way to heaven and you are saying let him love me. Is that the issue? Somebody is going to hell. You are saying let him love you. So you have now entered into a ministry of lifetime of intercession. All of us are called to ministry of intercession now. Especially married women and married men. Once you are married, you are called to pray for the other person. But there's a difference between prayer of thanksgiving. That you wake up every morning and you say, Father, I thank you for the gifts that you have given me. This man will be great. Things will happen in our life. There's a difference between that and prayer of warfare. That you are worrying for his soul. There's a difference. So you as a single person, you have a chance to choose right. One of the things God told me when I was getting married that changed my life. Look, you must have encounters with God. I know people say that there's a way. He must be compatible. You must be this. And all those things are good in themselves. But you as a believer, you must understand that you are first a spirit man. So God has a way that he talks to us. We are not unbelievers. We are children of God. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So his voice should be loud to you. You should not make any plans without God. So you can't say you want to marry because you love somebody. Does God want you to marry this person? That's what it means for him to be your Lord. It means that whatever he says is what you do. It's the final authority in your life. So I see a lot of people, oh, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome, he's from my place. My parents love him. We are compatible. He's in a department in church, but he's good. But is he good for you? Is he the one God said you should marry? So a lot of people enter into that trap. You marry and you don't even know what marriage is about. It's destiny. Love is the smallest factor in marriage. Destiny. You constantly ask yourself, is this the person I want to go the journey of life with? Do I want to reproduce after this kind? There are some people that we should not reproduce their kind though. These are questions, sincere questions you must ask yourself as a single person. So when I was getting married, I had many encounters with God. I knew that my, that's when I knew that marriage is not this. I love you. I love you that they do inside FEMO. It's much deeper than that. You are entrusting your life with somebody. You are joining with somebody. You are saying, I'm becoming you. We are one. You are my head. This is my head. I'm just his body. We are one. Everything we have is now one. Because we're in covenant. And the only thing that can separate us is death. We are now one body. How do you separate a body if you cut head from body? Is it not death? It's death. So when I was getting married, God said to me, he said, do you know that when you get married, you marry families? I say, yes, sir. He said, exactly. And I'm not just talking about natural families. He said, spiritual family as well. He says, as you're marrying a believer, his father, his, I'm his father. But if you marry an unbeliever, his father is Satan. And your father-in-law is allowed to come to your house. So Satan cannot come and you say you are binding him. He's your father-in-law. He has the right to be in your house. And when he's coming, listen, I know my father-in-law used to be HRH. When he's coming like this, uh -uh, you will see goats, you will see stockfish, you will see dry fish, you will see chicken, you will see the, um, yam, you will see all kinds of things. Your father-in-law will not come empty if he's a good father-in-law. Satan can't come empty. He will bring sickness. And he will come with his entourage. His demons must come. Listen, there's a, there's a supernatural world. You must never play with that. I'm saying it and we're laughing. What is the truth? And let me 
tell you, two unbelievers may be doing okay, but you cannot enter Satan's, you will leave, you are a lawful captive. You entered by yourself. You say Satan is your enemy and you enter this family by yourself. I need you to understand these things. Because if you understand it, you will not play with your destiny by joining yourself to an unbeliever. I don't care how handsome he is. Who is his father? I don't care how rich he is. Who is his father? Money is nothing. We have a God who make it rich and adds no sorrow. So who is his father? These are decisions you must make before you get married. If you marry a believer, you have set the foundation, God can work with it. If he's misbehaving, God can press him and say, no, don't do like this. This is my daughter. Don't do that. If she's misbehaving, God can correct her. Your mouth is too sharp. When I was telling my husband, I said, the only speech your mind is because me, my mouth can be sharp. Have you not heard me? <laughs> if it was not the Lord who was on my side. So even when I want to misbehave, the only thing you say, misbehave how? Who do you want to misbehave to? My friend, go and sit down. Go and apologize to him. Go and tell him. Even, I said, but I'm right. He said, it doesn't matter. I said, so who do you want to please? I said, okay, Holy Spirit, now you if no be you. That's the difference. So as a single person,